Breaking news from WRAL. Coverage you can count on. I'm Nick Perlin in the WRL Breaking News Tracker on I-95 northbound where one person is dead after crashing this van on the interstate. Coming up, we'll tell you what led up to this crash. Nearly a day later and a convicted murderer is still on the run. Authorities searching for this man throughout Hillsborough and beyond. We're live from Durham Tech Orange County campus where authorities are staging at this time. And this morning we take a live look at North Hills, a dense fog advisory in effect. I'll show you how long plus when we see some improvement in the weather coming up. Keeping your kids safe while in the classroom, the summit Wake County Schools leaders and law enforcement are holding today and the number one message they have for parents ahead of the school year. Get started very soon. Your news at six mm -hmm. gets started now. And we have a lot of information to get to you. We're not going to number it. We're just going to bring it to you here. I'm Jeff Hogan. And I'm Renee Chu. Great to have you with us. Elizabeth Gardner is off today mm -hmm. because she is sending her firstborn, her baby girl, uh, to her freshman yeah. year in college, taking that road trip. So we're sending her good thoughts. <laughs> Meanwhile, we have meteorologist Chris Michaels in with us this morning to uh, start off with a dense fog advisory. Exactly. Kind of a bad news, good news uh, morning for us. This is the bad news. It's the dense fog advisory advisory that's in effect in and around the triangle until nine o'clock this morning. Just use extra caution, especially near some area rivers and lakes. You just saw North Hills pretty foggy. Meanwhile, outside the station, we have the tower lit in purple because of the fog. But outside of that, you've got some clear sky overhead. And the positive is that the stormy pattern breaking up for the time being this front gliding to the south will get a breeze restored out of the north and northeast. It's going to lower humidity levels a little bit might actually make your yard work some Somewhat enjoyable as we head into the afternoon. Midday temps at 81, high temperatures in the middle 80s. Heading into the weekend, we'll track another front that brings the storm chances back into the mix. I'll show you how to plan for the weekend here and at the coast coming up in a little bit. All right, happening now in the WR Traffic Center, we continue to follow some breaking news. A crash on I-95 in the northbound lanes between Smith Selma and Smithville shuts down at least one lane. Uh, let's get right to WRL's Nick Perlin in the WRL Breaking News Tracker with new information he's learned in the last half hour. Nick. Well, Ken, you can see the damage to this car right here as it's getting towed away. And we know one person has sadly died in this crash early this morning. It happened at around 3 this morning. I'm going to get behind the camera real quick because I want to show you a little bit more of the damage here done to this van. And you can see here, crews working to tow it away. And I mean, as I zoom in here, you can just see how just how badly damaged it is. You can see the, the windshield there is shattered and some of the doors are falling off. So this is what we know what happened. We know at around 3, like I said, this van was traveling north and it hit the guardrail and at some point it flew off of the highway. You can see some of those tire marks here and it landed into the cornfield and that's how we know that unfortunately that one person has sadly died. State troopers or state highway patrol rather are uh, still working with us to get us more information but uh, just really sad early this morning. But again as of right now one lane here is closed as they work to remove this van. If people are traveling this way and they need to get around this what's a good way to do that. All right, a sad update for, uh, for that story right there, but I've got to tell you, as uh, the morning uh, wears on and traffic picks up, the backup will not likely happen. I would recommend getting off on exit 95 on Business 70, working way over to 301 as an alternate north-south route, and getting back on I-95 the closer you get to Selma. Uh, but we'll continue to monitor this and let you know how that's going to affect your morning commute. We just got reports of a disabled vehicle on Six Forks Road near I-540. I'll keep an eye on that and let you know how much is going to affect your commute. Uh, this just happened as well. Give me about 10 minutes. I'll let you know more about that as well. But elsewhere, all the major roads are delay free at this hour. <laughs> The urgent manhunt to find this man is not slowing down this morning in Orange County. Ramon Alston is a convicted murderer. He escaped custody while outside in Orange County Hospital around 7 yesterday morning. He's serving a life sentence after being convicted of killing this one-year-old girl, Malia Williams, on Christmas Day 2015 in Chapel Hill. WRL's Laura Levine joins us live from Durham Tech's Orange County campus, which is being used as a command post during the search. And Laura, we're expecting an update from authorities in just a few hours. 
Yes, Renee, and if you really think about it and put things into perspective, it was around this time yesterday when that inmate was making the travel here from Birdie County to Hillsboro. Now the convicted murderer is still out there, still on the run here at Durham Tech. You could see deputies parked outside of the building. We know Durham Tech Orange County campuses will activate and be under a yellow a code yellow, which essentially means that they will be remote today. If you get a good look at this photo, once again, the Orange County Sheriff's Office is searching for 30 year old Ramon Alston. He was last seen wearing handcuffs connected to a belly chain with a black box over the junction. Authorities have searched 580 acres, which includes a one mile radius around the UNC Hospital's Hillsborough campus. He escaped yesterday while he was being transported to receive care at the hospital. He freed himself from leg restraints, still in handcuffs, jumped out and ran into the woods. Investigators believe he had help getting away. We spoke with people who were nearby while this search continued. It's not a good idea to go outside um, at the moment and I could hear, you know, helicopters and everything. There was just like floods of uh, police officers coming in the building. Yeah, that was a student who had to stay indoors here at Durham Tech as this went on yesterday. We know that there is a $25,000 reward for any information leading to an arrest. That briefing and update we're expecting to get will begin at 930 this morning. Laura Levine, WRL News, live in Hillsboro. We're also working to get answers this morning about a shooting that hurt a young person in South Raleigh. Police responded to Trailwood Heights Lane at 815 last night. Video from the WRL breaking news tracker shows the extent of that police response to that neighborhood. The juvenile who was taken to the hospital is expected to survive. He was shot and we have asked Raleigh police if they've made any arrests in this case or have any persons of interest and we are waiting for that response. We're also making calls to find out if anyone was hurt in a shooting in a Nightdale neighborhood. Video from the WRL breaking news tracker shows the scene on Clay Hill Drive. You can see several police cars as well as crime scene tape blocking off part of the road. Police responded just after nine last night. They would not tell us at the time if anyone was injured or taken into custody. Covering Wake County today, school leaders and local law enforcement will come together to talk about strategies for making sure your kids stay safe in school this year. WRL's Kelsey Coffey is at Millbrook High School, and Kelsey Law Enforcement wants parents to know how they can play a role in keeping their kids out of harm's way. Jeff, they sure do, and Wake County school leaders will be meeting with law enforcement in, in a few hours here at Millbrook High School. They're going to be covering a lot of topics this morning, but number one on the list is how to protect your students if there's an on-campus threat. Sky 5 was there when the, there was a campus lockdown at uh, Enloe uh, High School back in April. This after a student was sent a photo of her boyfriend on campus. There were concerns he may have been armed, but police never found a gun or the boyfriend. We spoke with Sergeant Tom Brienzi from Holly Springs Police. This is their message for parents ahead of the school year. Talk to your kids about the consequences of misinformation on social media. Make sure that they are self-aware enough to, to realize what they know and what they do not know, and only, sh only share facts and then share them with a trusted person, whether that be a teacher or an administrator at a school or a law enforcement officer or the parent themselves. I asked the district if they keep track of the number of school lockdowns that uh, happened last year as a result of social media hoaxes. They say they don't keep track of those numbers, but we did report about two situations like that uh, that happened in April. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Raleigh. Today, former President Donald Trump will be in North Carolina for a rally. Vice President Kamala Harris will be in Raleigh for an event of her own later this week. This afternoon, Trump will speak at the Harris Cherokee Center in Asheville. He's expected to talk about the financial hardships North Carolina families face. Harris will host a campaign event in Raleigh on Friday. She's expected to talk about her economic policy plan, making it her first major policy rollout since joining the presidential race. We'll have full team coverage of both campaign events. 
When you see the video of the Federal Reserve Building and money being printed, you know we're talking about the economy this morning. Good morning, I'm Chris Lovingit here in the WREL Live Center. I'm giving you a preview of what we're supposed to be seeing today with the Consumer Price Index. Yesterday we saw the Producer Price Index, and today we're seeing that report that tracks things that Americans buy, you know, groceries, energy, things of that nature. And we're looking at how the futures are behaving this morning ahead of that report. Little change we're seeing here. S&P about 1.75 in the green there. You see the Dow Jones down too, but again, it's mostly un change for the most part. The CPI is expected out at 830 this morning. And the reason why we keep watching this is because next month we could potentially see the Fed decide that they'll cut interest rates. Well, that happened. That's why we're watching. It could happen next month. Obviously, that's affecting a lot of people, how you get your car, how you get credit card debt, things of that nature. So we're watching that this morning. Again, the consumer price index out at 830. We'll be watching here in the WRL Live Center. Hamas says it will not participate in high-stakes ceasefire negotiations scheduled for tomorrow in the Middle East. The group says it wants to implement what has already been agreed upon, not participate in a new round of negotiations. This comes as an attack from Iran on Israel appears imminent. The U.S. is adding to its firepower in the Middle East. That includes 14 warships and a guided missile submarine. Happening today, ground will be broken on a new affordable housing community in Durham. The Commerce Street Apartments will include 172 units. 88 will be reserved for older adults. 58 of them will be new affordable rental units. It's being built as a partnership between the Durham Housing Authority and CVS Health. Groundbreaking is happening at 10 this morning. We're 10 after 6 right now on your Wednesday morning. People who live near Red Hat Amphitheater are sharing their thoughts with the city about plans to relocate that venue. The message they shared with a city council member about the proposal. And sea lions and dolphins are getting sick along the California coast. Why researchers think they're being poisoned. And meteorologist Chris Michaels has a look at our forecast. Feeling nice out there this morning. Feeling great out there. Not looking great in parts of the area. We do have some dense fog out of the side of RDU. I'm going to show you how long a dense fog advisory is in effect this morning and where you could see some trouble spots coming up next. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. A good Wednesday morning to you. A live look outside of Fenton and Cary, and it's kind of hard to see it with all the fog that's in place. Wake County, just one of the places with a dense fog advisory until 9 o'clock. You see that for Lee, Chatham, Orange, Person counties, uh, Durham County as well, and Franklin County. We showed you a live look at Lewisburg where it looks much the same. So just keep that in mind as you make your way outside this morning. Temperatures mid to upper 60s. That's one of the positives, right? At least it feels a little better out there this morning, and the day as a whole will feel better as well. Partly cloudy, not as humid. High temperatures in the middle 80s in the triangle. And we're tracking tropical storm Ernesto. It's not going to make it directly here, but I'll show you some of the fringe impacts for the coast. That's coming up in my full forecast. And happening now in the W Traffic Center, we continue to follow that breaking news uh, crash shutting down at least one lane on I-95 northbound between Selma and Smithfield. Right there, the Business 70 interchange. Let's get a live look right now uh, from Nick Perlin in the WRL Breaking News Tracker. You see Nick talking with uh, um, first responders there on the scene. They're getting ready to pull this car out. One lane, I said, is closed. The other lane is open. As traffic begins to back up, you might want to get off and exit 95, Business 70, work your way over to uh, Highway 301 as a alternate north-south route, and that'll help you get back on I-95 closer to Selman. Of course, Jeff, we'll have another update in about 10 minutes. Look forward to talking about a, a different street closure here because people who live in the Boylan Heights neighborhood in Raleigh are talking about the closure of South Street as it makes way for the re re renovation of Red Hat Amphitheater, okay? So the neighborhood folks who live there, they held a meeting last night to talk about what to do next. They shared six renderings from an architect that show how a new Red Hat Amphitheater could be built without closing any streets. Raleigh City Council Chamber member Jane Harrison attended that meeting and City Council plans to vote next month on the plans to relocate Red Hat. If the city approves its plan, the new amphitheater could open in 2026. Today, the Wake County Public School System will celebrate its newest elementary school. A ribbon cutting will happen today for Woods Creek Elementary School in Holly Springs. The year-round school opened to students last month. Wake School Superintendent Robert Taylor will speak at today's ceremony. It gets started at 10 this morning. 
In California, an urgent race to save sea lions and dolphins as researchers are now looking into why an alarming number of them are getting sick. WRO's Michelle McConaughey is here with what they're saying about all this, Michelle. Yeah, Jeff, so far volunteers have responded to nearly 150 sea lions and at least two dolphins. They're all showing signs of poisoning from domoic acid. It's a neurotoxin from algae that gets into the fish that these animals eat and can flare up during the summertime. Experts say a strong upwelling of cold water and our warming climate are contributing factors. So it begs the question, are humans at risk? There's a risk. Right now, currently, there isn't a, a warning for human consumption, um, but sea lions are the first indicators of that toxin being in the environment. And she adds that the algae does well in warm environments, so if we're seeing an increase in that and it's getting the nutrients it needs to survive, it could spell bad news for the future. Unfortunately, this outbreak has been longer and more intense. It's been so hard on those animals. Michelle, thanks. Now that the NFL's preseason is underway, today's popular series, Inside the Game, is back. This morning, we meet Rich Salgado. He's a legend in the NFL world, known simply as Big Daddy. He's an insurance salesman who has helped hundreds of players. For the last 25 years, he has become the NFL's behind-the-scenes go-to guy, and one team even credits him for helping them win a Super Bowl. So you're at training camps, you're everywhere, really, drafts, owners' meetings. What would Commissioner Roger Goodell say about Big Daddy? Well, if I introduced myself as Rich Salgado, he would say, you're Big Daddy. <laughs> and, uh, and I will say, yes, Commissioner, I am. This morning on Today, learn how Big Daddy built this incredible reputation for himself and how he's making the impossible possible. Today airs at 7 right here on WREL. I can't wait to see Big Daddy in that role. 618 is the time right now. we got a big, dense fog advisory happening right now. Chris Michaels is in for Elizabeth Gardner in the WRO Severe Weather Center right now with also comfortable temperatures for us. Exactly, yes. And it's a good news, bad news situation this morning. Here's the good news. And I just want to say I'm jealous of Boone right now. 55 degrees. Even here at home, though, it's in the mid-topper 60s. Overall, not feeling bad. So as you wake up and smell the roses, check out these Roses in Battleboro. Thanks to Deborah Page for a great shot from our weather watchers. If you're seeing some of that fog out there, we want to see your pictures and share them. Go to WRAL.com and search weather watchers. You see some of that fog right now that Jeff was talking about from our WRAL tower camera. It's in the background there, but it is low lying. It is thick at times. Something to keep in mind for the morning commute, even though it feels pretty good out there. Temperatures by midday, they'll be in the upper 70s and lower 80s with high temperatures this afternoon between 85 and 87, right in the sweet spot in the triangle at about 86 degrees. It's a mix of clouds and sunshine, just a few fair weather clouds, but look at overnight. Does not get much better than that this time of year. Roxborough 61, Southern Pine 65, Rocky Mount checking in at 63 first thing tomorrow morning as we get that little bit of a breeze out of the north, bringing in that drier air. Enjoy it for the time being. We do have some tropical humidity back in the mix that'll contribute to some weekend storm chances and that that's all with an area of low pressure. Here's the two reasons why we care about that. So number one, with low pressure, you get rising air, more moisture being brought in. That's why I see some scattered storms in the forecast for the weekend. But number two, you see that counterclockwise spin. It's going to take Ernesto and it's going to push it away from us. So we don't see direct impacts like we did with Debbie, but I've plotted the wave heights here around the storm so that you can kind of get an idea as to how that's going to play a role on our forecast for the beaches this weekend. So you may not see much storm but you'll see the rip currents, some rough surf. You'll probably see those red flags out there at the beach. Something to keep in mind as you're making your plans for the upcoming weekend. Let's bring it back home, though. Temperature 86 today, 60s the next two mornings. We've been begging for this kind of weather for like the past several weeks. Heading into Friday, 88 the high. May see a few evening storms. And keep in mind, storm chances for this weekend, they're ranging between 40 and 50 percent. I wouldn't necessarily go canceling your plans just yet. And keep in mind that that pattern holds true here, really, as we head into the early portion of next week. But at least we're starting to feel a little more comfortable. Boy, that's a really nice pattern we're yeah. getting. 
getting yeah, into. Yeah. Hey, Chris, thanks. Uh, here's something uh, nice that you're looking for this morning. We continue to follow that uh, breaking news on I-95 uh, northbound. We're just getting word that it's in the clearing phase, and that uh, that one lane is beginning to reopen right now. Uh, back here in the Triangle and surrounding communities, we're seeing a little bit of slowdown between Glenwood and Six Forks Road this morning. I'm working to find out exactly what's going on to determine if it's a crash that hasn't been reported yet or if it's just a morning congestion. I'll let you know how this is going to continue to affect your morning commute. Uh, we're looking at a disabled vehicle right now on Six Forks Road near I-540. That's not causing any problems for you as well. And New Bern Avenue in the eastbound lane at New Hope Road right here. That's not causing any problems for you as well. But elsewhere around the Triangle and surrounding communities, all the major roadways in Durham, Chapel Hill, and uh, 87 coming in from Nightdale, all free and clear this morning. Ken, thanks. A family wants answers after a three year old was able to get out of a child care playground and then walk into four lanes of traffic. How is this three year old able to get out because it wasn't latched? The response from the center after the family says they only found out what happened when seeing photos of their toddler online. And Olympic hero Steven Nedorosik is showing he is more than just the pommel horse guy. His amazing Tonight Show performance coming up in What's Trending. This What's Trending report sponsored by Rug and Home. Steven Nedorosik won two medals at the Olympics, and the pommel horse isn't his only amazing talent. Yeah, Ken Smith here now with what's trending, Ken. Yeah, Nedorosik, who gained quite the following in Paris, was on The Tonight Show last night with Jimmy Fallon, and he challenged him to solve a Rubik's Cube. Well, get this, with the same calm as he showed in his events in Paris, he solved it in a little more than 15 seconds. <laughs> what? Yeah, Steven is brilliant. Th this is his thing. This is how he He's able to stay in the moment, and he says that helps him with his gymnastics, too. And I remember seeing him on the Today Show. He also solved the Rubik's Cube, but he's slipping a little bit. Yeah. See, that he was able to do it in 10 seconds on this one. It was 15. So, Steven, <laughs> got to work on it just a little his bit. His record's like eight seconds. Yeah, so yeah. Like, yeah. He uses that a calming device. I usually just want to rip the stickers yeah, off and get so I, mad at that thing. I never saw them. So. Yeah. No. And weren't Amazing. people calling him like Superman or Clark Kent back in Paris? Yeah, with the oh, glasses. Yeah, with glasses. Mm -hmm. All right, here's something else from Hollywood. Actor Dominic Sasso is in talks to play celebrity chef Anthony Bourdain in the upcoming biopic Tony. Sessa is fresh off playing a starring role in the Oscar-winning movie The Holdovers. Yeah, it wasn't a bad one to make his uh, debut there with The Holdovers as Angus Tully mm. in that role there. So we'll hear more of his name for certain. More news to come. Chris. Hey there, guys. Good morning. Ahead at 630. The humidity dropping off for a little bit. I'm going to show you how long that lasts. Plus, where we're seeing some dense fog developing this morning. That's coming up in just a little bit. And here on the WRL Live Center, we are following breaking news happening at Virginia State University. Authorities there saying that four people were shot overnight. Join us in a few minutes as we break down what we know this morning.